there may be new rules of the road when it comes to trade. Representatives of the U.S., Canada, and Mexico are meeting to renegotiate the North American Free Trade Agreement, otherwise known as NAFTA, and that could impact products we use and consume every single day. Cars are incredibly complicated machines, so check this out. When you're here in a garage, you can really start to see the tens of thousands of parts that go into these vehicles. So NAFTA has led automakers and suppliers to invest in these complex supply chains that spread across the continent so that all of these parts are relatively cheap to make and the end product, the car, is affordable for consumers to buy. Do most people understand how complicated cars are when they come in? Uh, they don't. No they idea? Don't. Yeah, they have no idea. For example, a car made in an American factory might include seats and brakes assembled in Mexico, bumpers and plastic produced in Canada, and airbags made in Japan. Under current NAFTA rules, 62.5% of the content of a car has to originate in North American countries for that vehicle to be tariff-free. But that number might change. The Trump administration says it wants to update and strengthen the rules of origin. That could mean raising the threshold and tightening rules for subcomponents. The Trump administration's goal is to promote U.S. manufacturing. But if the terms are too strict, the rules could backfire car companies might move manufacturing elsewhere, and prices could rise. So what about your lunch? NAFTA has actually helped make foods relatively affordable, available, and pretty easy to buy. This top-rated restaurant buys its ingredients all over the continent. Avocados are mainly sourced from Michoacán, same as the limes. Our tomato comes from Baja California, San Quintin. Um, and then we have, you know, cilantro, onions from Guerrero. What about the meats? All our meats are from the U.S. Um, all our proteins are from the U.S. Come from uh, the two major beef distributors, so it comes from all over the nation. These tacos are a perfect example of how interconnected the North American agriculture and dairy industries are. The U.S. imported $10.5 billion worth of fruits and vegetables from Mexico last year. That includes more than 80% of our avocados and roughly one-third of our tomatoes. Alternatively, Mexico imports more American corn than any other country, totaling $2.6 billion in 2016. And while the U.S. is a top producer of pork, beef, and chicken, we also import $2.2 billion worth of red meats from Canada and $1.5 billion worth of live animals. And then there's dairy, a point of contention between the countries, especially given Canada's long-standing rules to support prices for domestic dairy farmers and keep imports at bay. Farmers, ranchers, producers, and restaurant owners will be watching NAFTA negotiations closely. They fear that protectionist trade policies would make it more expensive to produce products. Then there are your clothes. A National Retail Federation spokesman said, Americans don't make clothes, they make the market for clothes. Take this shirt, for example. The tag says, made in the USA with imported materials. That's code for garments are complicated. Just like with autos, NAFTA sets rules of origin for apparel and textile. There's a basic rule known as yarn forward, meaning that in order to be tariff free, a garment has to originate in North America from the yarn forward. But there are some caveats. Trade preference levels, or TPLs, allow duty-free access for certain amounts of yarn and fabrics that undergo significant processing in NAFTA countries. And the rules aren't as strict for fabrics that are in short supply in North America, like silk and linen. The apparel and textile industry has cautioned the administration against tightening those kind of rules. Trade groups say that companies will likely turn to Asia for more apparel rather than comply with tedious NAFTA regulations. So how long will negotiations take? The Trump administration says it wants to wrap things up by the end of the year, but trade experts say that's a very ambitious timeline.